Hey there, DIYer. I'm Alan Hain, the Lawn Care Nut. And today, I'm gonna give you the very best piece of advice that anyone could ever give you when it comes to having a healthy, beautiful lawn. If you follow the advice in this video and you do this task properly and consistently throughout the season this year, no matter what your grass type is, no matter what shape it's in, you will see vast improvement in just one season. I can guarantee it. And you know, the best thing about what I'm gonna teach you today is that it doesn't require any type of spraying or fertilizing or throwing down chemicals. Nothing like that. It's actually something you're already doing. You're probably just not doing it right. And in today's video, I'm gonna help you learn the proper way to do this so you can get the max benefit from it. So what is it that I'm talking about here? So what is it that I'm talking about here? I'm talking about the miracle of mowing. But when I say mowing, I need to caveat that by saying proper mowing. Now hold on, don't run away yet. You see, I've been doing this for a long time here on the internet, and the one thing I've realized over the years is if I don't have some sort of miracle fertilizer for you to throw down to make your grass look like that, Hey, hey, what are those guys doing? Hey, 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 excuse me, excuse me. I'm trying to, you understand? Hey, listen to me. I'm, I'm trying to, oh yeah, see, even I have trouble spots in my lawn. <laughs> Look at that one. Man. That probably wouldn't be so tall if I mowed more often, would it? <laughs> All right, so what I was getting at is, I've learned over the years that if I don't have some sort of miracle product for you to throw down to turn your lawn to look like that overnight, a lot of people, they don't even wanna hear it. But the truth of the matter is, mowing is really the most important thing. It is the first thing that you need to learn how to do and to commit to doing properly in order to get your lawn to look like that, no matter what chemical or what fertilizer you're gonna throw down. Now, the other thing I wanna say is, this video is not gonna teach you about which mower you should buy. I actually have two videos that I'll link at the end. You know, you can put the little square box is at the end of the video for you to watch. Two videos on mowing, as well as I'll put one up, up, up in the eye right there, but what these videos are is one is how to choose a lawnmower. When I say that, it's like, do you need a, you know, a 21 inch mower? Do you need a 36 inch mower? Do you need a ride-on or a tractor or a, you know, a zero turn? It's all about that, like looking at all the different types of mowers, sizes of mowers, uh, platforms that you may look at in order to be able to mow your lawn properly, you know, and get it done in a timely manner. And then the second video that I'm gonna link for you is one that I just did last week which talks about how to enjoy mowing because one of the things you're gonna find here real quick is that if you enjoy mowing, you will do it more often. So I wanna give you a little analogy here. Think of mowing like working out. I actually have mentioned in the last couple of videos that I have gained a lot of weight. I actually recently started working out. Now, I have worked out at other times in my life, but it's been several years since I've done any type of workout program and I've actually seen the results of not working out. So recently I started doing some circuit training type stuff and I've been doing it now for two weeks and actually I feel a lot better. I have shown no physical changes. <laughs> at all but i actually feel a lot better my 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 innards feel better my blood seems to be pumping cleaner i i don't know how else to describe it but you know if you haven't worked out for a long time and you're out of shape and you're maybe overweight like me and then you start working out it's really hard at first it's very painful but after just a couple of weeks the first benefit you get is a feeling of improvement and that's what it is it's it, you can't see it but you can feel it. And that's exactly what mowing turf does. It gets all the systems moving. It gets the juices flowing, so to speak. When you work out, you're tearing down muscle and that hurts at first, but, but over time, what happens? That muscle builds back bigger and stronger. And also your tolerance for resistance and stress increases at the same time. This is the exact same thing with mowing. The more you mow, the healthier your lawn will grow. The more it will activate itself, it will stimulate growth and rooting, and all of these things are healthy. Turf needs to be exercised, it needs to grow just like your body needs to be exercised in order to stay lean and fit. Now, if you're anything like me, you actually like the smell of fresh cut grass. It might remind you of summers hanging out in the lawn with your dad. Maybe you play in the sprinklers after he mowed and there's that smell of that fresh cut grass in the air. I mean, there's actually candles being made now, right? Fresh cut grass. But did you know that when you mow and you get that scent off in the air, it's actually your turf executing its own form of military triage. That smell is rallying the troops. Physiologically speaking, when turf is damaged mechanically, like from mowing, organic compounds called green leaf volatiles, or GLVs, are released. 
Now, the release of these GLVs actually does a few things within the plant. Some of the cells are there to kind of start repairing some of the damage that's been created. Others work like in an antibacterial way and stop infection. And then there's still others that will inhibit fungus or fungal intrusion or growth. And the most important of these, at least in my opinion, are the GLVs that actually strengthen the plant, almost like a fortification, like realizing we're under attack, we gotta make ourselves stronger and healthier. All of those things are done by the GLVs. All of those things are done when you cut the lawn. Just like Marines train hard back home so when they go to battle, they're prepared, this is exactly what mowing is doing for your lawn. It's training it for when the real stress comes on, which could be from insects, disease, drought, any number of things. Never forget, the more you mow, the healthier your lawn will grow. Hoorah! This is why for years I've been championing the concept of mowing your lawn twice per week. Sure, go ahead and mow on Saturday or Sunday like you've always been accustomed to, but then also mow on Wednesday night after work. We call that weeknight lawn work. Now, the way the world works today, I bet a lot of you all are working from home. So on Wednesdays on your lunch break, instead of sitting there scrolling through Instagram and eating chips and salsa like you normally do, why don't you go outside, get a little exercise, and get in a good mow? Now, I want to pause here and ask real quick. Do you like to learn concepts or learn new things based on analogies like I've just given you here? And are you a beginner, someone just starting out in your lawn care journey, and even though you're ready to commit to the mow, you're wondering about how to get your lawn green? What does fertilizer mean? How do I spray the lawn? If that's you, I have something for you. It's called Yard Care Boot Camp. I'll link it down below. Yard Care Boot Camp is basic training for DIYers. It'll teach you everything you need to know to start working on your lawn and do it confidently. If you're worried about burning your lawn, if you're worried about hurting something, throwing down too much, all of those things, if you don't even know the difference in cool season and warm season grass, this training is for you. It's called Yard Care Boot Camp and I'll link it below. I'd love to see you on the inside. Hoorah! Now another reason that mowing often is so important is because of what's called the one-third rule. When you mow your lawn, you wanna try to follow the one-third rule. All right, so I'm gonna film this section on my phone here because the old GoPro, she's overheating. So the one-third rule states that you should never remove more than one-third of the grass blade's length in a single mowing. That's because we don't wanna stress it too much. We wanna train it, but we don't wanna overtrain it. So by following the one-third rule, you're gonna stimulate all of those good processes we talked about, but you're not gonna overstress or overtrain the grass. So you can see here, this grass blade I've grabbed here is four inches long, so I could cut off 1.3 inches of this grass blade, which I'm not gonna be able to do while this is in my hand. So you could see if I was following the one third rule, I would remove 1.3 inches in a single mowing. Now again, you're not gonna be this perfect. Well, you might, if you're completely nutty, you might actually get out and measure. But the idea is just to get a visual. That's all you're really taking off when you cut. You see that? A lot of you guys visualize cutting and you're whacking your lawn way down to here. Just visualize it like this. It's just the tips. That's what she said. If when you go to mow, you'll visualize it like that, that I'm just taking off the tips, that'll help you in your mowing. And now you're seeing why I talk about that frequent mowing. Because if you have cool season grass up north, you're in the middle of your growth phase. Your lawn is growing faster right now than it ever will for the rest of the season. So you really do have to mow more often, but maybe in the summer you can cut it back a little bit. Whereas warm season turf, like I have down here in the south, we're not quite there yet. We're still mowing, you know, every six days or so. But in the middle of summer, that's when our turf really rages and we'll have to be mowing every three days. But again, I wanna reiterate because repetition is the key to learning. When you go to mow, visualize it this way. You're just taking off that top one third of the grass and letting the rest remain. Because that's what she said. All right, now the next thing that we need to talk about is the proper mowing height. And when I talk about the proper mowing height, it's a little bit different for every grass type. And what I'm gonna give you here are the standard best practices. In other words, these are the mowing heights that are recommended for general healthy lawn maintenance. You can always go to extremes and we'll talk about that in a minute. But for the most part, when you're new, just follow these mowing heights by your grass type so that way you can set yourself up for success. So for cool season lawns, Kentucky bluegrass, turf type tall fescue, and perennial ryegrass, the generally accepted mowing height for you guys is what we would call tall, three and a half inches or higher. If you're not sure what that means, just jack your mower all the way to the top setting and leave it there, especially during the summer. The taller you mow your cool season grass in summer, the more shade you will be providing for your root system and for your soil. This helps to keep things a little bit cooler deeper down as well as retain moisture. And that's gonna be needed during the long, hot summer. Now this lovely, beautiful, chubby grass here, this is called St. Augustine grass. And this is found in Florida, across through the Gulf states, a lot in Texas and in Southern California. And you wanna mow this as tall as your mower will go. Four inches or higher is ideal. And you'll almost never have to cut it any lower. You just keep it tall all season long. 
This is zoysia grass. It's becoming more and more popular across a lot of the southern states and even up into the transition zone. And for the most part, you want to mow this between one and two inches. The lower you mow it, the less problems it's going to have with thatch buildup. But definitely somewhere between one and two inches. I have been known to let mine go a little bit taller in the summer, and that's fine if you do that. But for the most part, try to keep it down to that two inches or lower. Now, for my friends with Bahia grass. Bahia is mostly found in Florida, and I think along some of the Gulf Coast, like in Louisiana and that. Bahia grass should definitely be mowed tall. Again, as tall as you can get it. Just set that mower as up to the top and forget about it all year long. Bahia will get thicker the more you mow it, but you definitely want to keep it tall. All right, let me give you a tip that's going to save some of you some headaches here. So a lot of mowers, the way you adjust the height is on the wheels here. And in fact, they're actually independently adjusted like this one. So what will happen inevitably is you won't do it on purpose, but you'll have this wheel one notch lower and maybe that one's a notch higher and these two are the same. Well, when that happens, you'll get an uneven cut. And, I, and believe it or not, this happens more often than you would think. So periodically what I do is I make sure the height adjustment on all four corners is exactly the same. Now last and definitely not least, Bermuda grass. I say Bermuda to the end because Bermuda is a beast. Bermuda is the most alpha of the alpha turfs. You can't kill it. It can take over everything. It is the most aggressive turf out there, and I mean that in a positive way. However, the very healthiest or the best way to mow Bermuda is as short as you can get it. And in fact, if you're somebody that wants to commit to real mowing, Bermuda would be the grass type that you would commit to it on. Now let me explain what real mowing is. Your typical mower that you have and that I have is called a rotary mower. The blade spins underneath it like a ceiling fan. A real mower is what you see used on golf courses for the most part, and the blades spin on a reel like this, like a rolling pin, and there are multiple blades. That gives you a much finer cut, and it also allows you to mow much lower and much tighter, and Bermuda really, really likes that. However, there is a much bigger commitment to that. You guys will see a lot of guys on YouTube that are real mowing, and their lawns are beautiful, and I can't deny that. But there's a commitment factor there that they're not always telling you. And that's why I want to go over and show you the guy that I think knows more about real mowing than most people on YouTube, and that's my friend Brett from Brett's Grass Capades. All right, so I'm over here at Brett's house, and we're going to talk a little bit about mowing because Brett is unique within our lawn care community. Very unique. Yeah, we know that. When I say unique, I mean he real mows, which is not necessarily so unique. But what Brett has done is he has real mowed both cool season and now warm season turf. So I would say, as far as you want to talk about people that are experts, and I know you don't like being called that. I don't like that. He does. But he is definitely my resident expert when it comes to real mowing. So he's going to talk a little bit about some of the challenges you face when you real mow your lawn. But before we do that, let's take a look at his Bimini Bermuda that I keep thinking is fake. Look better. Yes, he is always modest, thinks it could look better, but it could I definitely mean, look better. Look at this. It is just. It looks as good as it did on the golf course that I visited. Like this is exactly the look that it had. And so you've been just uh, mowing how often? So I usually mow every other day. Um, sometimes every three days, but usually every other day. Now, that's the thing I wanna point out with real mowing. It's a much bigger commitment. And the other thing to consider is we are not in our heavy growing season here in Florida yet. We're still a little cooler. The days are not as long as they're going to be, even though they're getting longer. And we're also not in the rainy season. Once we get to the rainy season, I bet you're going to have to probably mow every day for sure. So one thing that I'm not doing that I typically do is I haven't put down any plant growth regulator. So when you put down a plant growth regulator, it slows down the vertical growth of your turf and allows you to mow less frequently. There's, you know, there's a handful of different kinds. You know, there's, there's T-Nex, there's Primo Max, there's Governor G if you want to do a granule. There's tons of different options for plant growth regulators. I just haven't put anything down yet. I wanted to let my turf really establish before I slowed it down. And so that's one of those things you want to consider. You're still going to have to mow often, but then now you have an extra added chemical that you're going to have to apply in order to regulate the growth so you don't necessarily have to mow every single day. It's one of those things to consider if you're going to real mow. 
Now, one other thing Brett pointed out to me is, see, I don't have any real mowing experience. So another thing he pointed out to me is that you still need to have a rotary mower if you're real mowing. Why is that? So there's gonna be times where you're going to need a rotary mower, even though you've got a real mower. And uh, typically that's if, you know, like you said, if you go on vacation and you take a week off, if you come back and you try to real mow that all off, especially a lot of these real mowers, especially the, the used ones that people are able to find on classifieds or through auctions or places like that, they don't have a grass catcher on it. So if you've got an inch and a half of top growth and you're mowing at half an inch, you're taking off a full inch. And if you take off a full inch and just dump it on the lawn, it's gonna look terrible. You're, it's, it's, you, you can't do it. So you're gonna have to take your rotary mower, mow off as much of the top growth as you can. And, and then for me, I have these trees out here in my lawn that like to dump leaves and sticks and twigs. And uh, so like in the fall, when we put this in, I guess winter, winter, we call it, you know, it's in always Florida, we here. call it winter, yeah. <laughs> even though it, it was like 70, the tree was like thinking it was kind of like fall. And so it's dropping leaves and all kinds of crap in the yard. And so I had to, uh, I had to take the rotary mower out and bag up all the, the leaves and twigs and, and all that good stuff. So it's, uh, you're, you're really not gonna be able, unless you get a system like a Swordman or an Allet, where you can get the, the turf rake and the bagger there where you can rake up all that crap and dump it into your, your little bagger. Um, unless you have something like that, you're you're still gonna need a rotary mower. But still, even if you get that outlet, still more steps, more things to do. Yep. More, yep. It's not it's, just go mow and blow and be done. It's definitely more involved than coming out here with a rotary mower. It just is, but it looks better. So if you don't want to commit to real mowing, I completely understand that. There are beautiful Bermuda lawns that are mowed with a rotary mower. Check out my friend Michael Bowman, BYD. He has great Bermuda grass in Georgia and he mows that with a rotary mower. If you are gonna mow your Bermuda with a rotary, you still wanna mow often, you may even wanna mow more often, but you definitely wanna keep it down below two inches. And if you have a rotary mower that'll do well at that one inch mark, that's really where you wanna keep it. So the lower you go, the better with Bermuda. Even on a rotary, try to keep it right around that one inch mark. Okay, now the last thing people ask me is should I mulch or catch my clippings? And the answer is 90% of the time, you should be mulching your clippings. That means recycling them or returning them into the soil. So there may be something that's not apparent to you, and let me explain it. Your grass takes nutrients from the soil. Nutrients such as nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus, iron, manganese, magnesium, sulfur. All of these things come out of the soil. This is also why we fertilize the lawn, because fertilizer puts things into the soil that aren't there naturally. And all of that allows your grass to grow healthy and turn this nice, beautiful green color, which allows it then to perform the process of photosynthesis more efficiently, which is what its job is. Its job is to suck up sunlight, create sugar, send the sugars down, and then the nutrients and water come back up, and that's the whole cycle. So that means then that this grass has literally consumed some of those nutrients, and those nutrients, they don't disappear, they don't go away, they're just now inside of this plant, just in a different form. So when you recycle your clippings and you drop them back in, you are recycling some of the nutrients that you have applied that have been used by the grass plant you're putting them back if you were to bag these clippings and take this away you're literally taking nutrients out of your lawn well you're gonna be my friend now you coming over to say hello okay I mean why were you screaming in the middle of my video last time I mean you got to be nice you know like we got to live together here I mean I like you guys I think you're awesome People say you're the ribeye of the sky, but we can live together and we can be friends. You wanna shake on it? No, 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 no. Now there are times when you're gonna to wanna to bag your clippings and that is when there is disease present in the lawn. And that's because disease spores can get spread around by mowing. So if you suck up the clippings, that will suck up some of those disease spores and you literally take them away. It's not a cure for the disease, it's nothing like that, but it's just a, a practice that you can do that can aid in a time of disease, just not making it any worse. Another time you'd wanna bag your clippings is if you did allow the lawn to get overgrown. Maybe you went on vacation or something, who knows, right? And it got super overgrown and you noticed that it was leaving clumps when you mowed, that would be a time when you would wanna go ahead and bag then too, because you don't wanna leave clumps on the lawn. So there you go, guys. There's the keys to proper mowing, which is the basis of having a healthy lawn. 
Now, the other thing that frequent mowing is going to do is it's going to help you to learn your land. You'll be walking your lawn a lot more often and you'll learn things about it. What areas are bumpy? What areas are smooth? What areas retain water? What areas don't? What areas are in shade versus sun? What areas struggle in the heat? What areas don't? What areas have more weeds? All of these things because that makes you observant of your land and that makes you better at understanding your battlefield for when you do go to do the more advanced strategies like fertilizing and killing weeds. So once again, if you're a beginner and you do want some training, check out Yard Care Bootcamp below. I know that'll be helpful to you. And as always, I hope this video in general has been helpful to you. Please subscribe to the channel and hit that like button. I'm Alan Hayne, The Lawn Care Nut. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the lawn. We gotta show the people that we're friends though. They think I harass you guys, and I don't, right? You know I'm cool with you. You know we're buds, right? We don't we don't fight, we're just kidding. Like it's a joke, it's comedy. And I, I just don't think people get that. They think they think that me and you are actually at war. When you know that I really don't, but I like you. I think you're cool. I mean, look at how tall you are. You're almost taller than me. Of course, most people are almost taller than me, but you know, anyway. I appreciate you guys hanging out, I really do. What you wanna come in for lunch? Alright, come on, let's go.